Good morning, Black Hat. Uh, welcome to Defender Pretender, when Windows Defender updates become a security risk. Uh, before we begin, I would like to invite you to join the speakers in the wrap-up room in Mandalay B, Mandalay B as in Bravo, uh, following the session for continued discussions. Um, and of course, we thank you for putting your phones on silence. Uh, now, it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Omer Atias and Tomer Barr. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our talk. I hope it will be super interesting as we think it will be. So we'll present ourselves first. My name is Tomer Barr, and I'm the VP of Security Research at SafeBridge. And actually, this is our 10th talk at Black at USA. I have 20 years of experience. I presented at many conferences around the world. And this year, I was qualified to speak three different talks at Black Hat and DEF CON. Hello, my name is Omer Atias. I'm a security researcher at Safe. My name is Omer Atias. I'm a security researcher at SafeBridge. I have over six years of experience in cybersecurity field, especially in low level and vulnerability research. And I'm also a technology and science enthusiast. Back to you, Tomer. Thank you, Omer. OK, let's start. We will introduce our research motivation and goal. Then we will describe in details Defender update process and the vulnerability we discovered. We will demo different super interesting attack vectors. And we will finish our talk with important takeaways before leaving time for Q&A. Let's begin. So in this session, we are going to walk you all through the process of how we turn Defender to Defender Pretender. And our motivation originated from the Flame malware used by a state-sponsored actor and exploited the Windows update process using a sophisticated man-in-the-middle attack. Flame was able to hijack the Windows update mechanism by posing as a legitimate Microsoft update server, allowing it to deliver malicious updates and maintain persistence on the target system. Our goal was to achieve similar capabilities, but running without admin privileges, without possessing a fraud certificate, and with no prayer requirements of men in the middle, and still achieve full takeover on Defender workflow. Let's start to analyze Defender update process and understand what happens locally during an update. So Defender check with the Microsoft Update Center for new updates. We found out that the updates are returned as a single executable file. The file full name is pretty long, Microsoft Protection Anti-Malware Front End, and we'll refer it to as MPAM from now on. We download this MPAM file, analyze it, and found it has a cab resource. Then we manually extracted the CAB resource and got six files, two executables, MP Engine and MP6 tab, and four files with unfamiliar VDM extension. When we tried to execute the MPOM file, we observed that it executed the MP6 tab as a child process using the MART command line. After this execution, we saw the Defender was updated so it seems like the stub's role is to initiate the update process. The VDM files are loaded to Defender's main process, as you can see here. And MP Engine DLL was also used by this process. This DLL exports Defender's core functionality. Let's investigate a little bit more about these VDM files. So the VDM files are actually portable executable files However, application. However, they cannot be executed as they have no code logic at all. So we assume that they are spatial data files that contains the detection signatures. Furthermore, we observe that the two of them are labeled with the keyword base and the other two are labeled with the keyword delta, with the main difference being their sizes. 
the base file are significantly larger than the de delta files. So we speculate that this is due to incremental updating for efficiency reason, because you probably don't want to send the entire database each time you need to update a small update, right? And the base file has a major version of 391 and zero minor version, and the delta file has the same major version and 3508 at that time as the minor version. And I'm telling you that because the delta version represents the current version of the Defender Security Intelligence. So this may indicate that the delta file are related to the signature data. A quick check reveals that all six files are digitally signed by Microsoft, which probably indicates that the update process was designed against tampering. However, let's continue to explore further before reaching a definitive answer to this speculation. To summarize the update process so far, the AMPL file is fetched from the internet, and upon execution, it triggers an update. The following three steps occur. AMPAM extracts the VDM file, MP Engine DLL and MP6 tab from itself into the update payload folder located at the temporary directory. AMPAM then executes the 6 tab in order to perform the update. The 6 tab takes the VDM files and MP Engine DLL and uses them to update Windows Defender. So easy, right? Let's continue. Now we've gained high level knowledge about the update process and we can start to play around with the files involved. If we will be able to modify MP Engine to our own DLL, it will be a game over for Defender resulting in local privilege escalation, right? So let's try it. We modified a valid update payload that we have downloaded from the internet and replaced only the original MP Engine, as you can see there, with our own fake DLL, even though the DLL was digitally signed by Microsoft. Then we executed the stub with the appropriate command line, and of course we failed. During a kernel debugging, we got this exception that tells us that the DLL is not signed, and this protection is implemented since the Defender main process is a protected process, a PPL process, which cannot load unsigned DLLs. So we thought to ourselves, is this the end of our research lead? And we decided not to give up and focus on the VDM files. What will happen if we will update Defender using a modifier older VDM file? We decided to modify only the file version, making Defender believe it's a newer version, but without modifying any data, without modifying the data itself. This modification will turn the VDM file to be unsized because the file, the file version are embedded in the file data, but we decided to give it a shot anyway. For our surprise, the update attempt succeeded. We actually updated an older version, pretending to be a newer version, and most importantly, using unsigned files with a low privilege user. So this was the first clue that something is fishy here. But when we tried to modify additional random byte in this VDM data itself, and not just the file version, and execute a second update, we got an error. So we understood it won't be that simple. And we have to learn more about the update process. Let's summarize what we accomplished so far. We understood in high level Windows Defender update process, and have become familiar with the involved files. We attempted to modify MP Engine to use our own fake DLL, but were unsuccessful in doing so. However, we did succeed in modifying an old payload to appear as a new payload by modifying the VDM files, but finally got an error when we update using VDM files with modified random data. We left with the question, how does a low privilege user can replace the files managed by Defender protected process that run in high privileges? We began to analyze MP6 tab. After a bit of reversing, 
we understood that MP6 that communicate with MSMP engine, which is the main process of Defender, via RPC, remote procedure calls. But at that point in time, we were unable to find a specific RPC interface which was used. And the challenge was even more difficult since RPC tools that we all used, like RPC View, could not display the RPC data due to the involved protected process. So we did the manual reverse engineering and found this RPC GUID, which belongs to MPSVC DLL. And also we found out that the function number parameter was 42, corresponding to a function named server MP update engine signature function, which by its name indeed seems like the function we were looking for. After the RPC is done, the execution will continue from Defender main process on the right and will reach init engine contents function, which will start the update process by calling the R signal function in our MP engine DLL. Now we are ready for dynamic kernel debugging to understand the rest of the execution flow. As you can see, the execution flow is pretty long. We will skip to the interesting part in low database function, which is called to each of the four VDM files. So now we know for sure that the VDM is indeed contains the update database, because it's called low database, right? Let's analyze the database format, so we will be able to modify the data in much smarter way than we did so far. So as we mentioned, the VDM file is a Windows portable executable files with no code logic. It includes a resource section, and the resource section contains compressed data that start with RMDX magic bytes. The signature in both the base file and the delta file are compressed with zlib, but the zlib magic bytes are absent. By simply adding these two magic bytes at the bottom, and running this one line command, it can be decompressed. And guess what? We were very surprised to see that the signatures are not encrypted. In a bit brief look over the base file, we probably could see where a signature begin and ends. And probably the actual unique strings defend those searches in order to detect, in this example, the conti ransomware. The delta file format appears to be a bit more complex, and we have decided to prioritize it to later time. So now we are going to focus on the base files. The base file, as we assume, contains most of the signature logic, and it seems easier to understand, as we saw the slide before. So let's see what we discovered. Each signature has a four byte signature header which contains the signature type and size. The type is one byte long, and the size is three byte long. The signature data begins right after the signature header, so a simple struct. Instead of reversing each signature type, we searched on Google for some relevant information and found this comprehensive list of signature types. So you can see a lot of them. We'll use them later. Each thread starts with a signature type 5C, so you can see at the top. A thread is a collection of signatures. This, these signatures are simply unique strings or byte sequences which belongs to the malware family, and you can see several strings from Conti. The collection of the signatures always end up with thread and signature, a 5D type, as you can see at the bottom. The base file, is actually a sequence of threads. When one thread ends, the next thread begins, and so on. Using this knowledge of this signature format, we were able to extract more than two and a half million signature from the base file. We figure out most of the member of this signature. For example, the thread name, its category, and severity of the thread. Now we can conduct an experiment in order to verify if we can modify it in a more smarter way than we did before. So we extracted the string from the VDM file and copied them 
uh, to uh, Visual Studio and uh, compile them. But as you can see, we only have the strings. So the uh, main function at line 16 only contain a return, so it's an empty function. And after we compile it, we copy it to uh, VM with Defender, and as we can see, Defender immediately triggered, and even though there is no malicious code at all at our executable, and as expected, the threat alert name is the name of the threat we investigated, Conti. So now we modified just the threat name associated with the signature from Conti to something else, and recompress the VDM file data and try to update Defender again using this unsigned modified version. But unfortunately, the attempt was unsuccessful as well and resulted in the unexplained error as you can see on the bottom. We assume that this error is due to validation mechanism and Omer will speak about Defender's validation. Thank you. Thank you. So, we went back to the drawing board and reverse engineer the update process with the goal of identifying the point where the update failed and why it failed. So a quick reminder, for each VDM file, load database is called and then checks the validity of the file and then calls to consume input compress function. Consume input compress function is a huge function that perform a lot of operations on the VDM file. Also, we suspected the function to be the function that returned the error code we saw in the logs. So we focused deeply on the internals of these two function and specifically on consume input compress function. We did it by dynamically debugging the update execution. So let's see what we got from debugging. The debugging led us to figure out two important structures that contained in the VDM file. The first one is the RMDX header, which appears in the beginning of every VDM resource data. One of the important members of the RMDX header is the data offset, which points to a second header called Zlib data header, which we can see marked in blue. The Zlib header actually contains the Zlib compressed data of the VDM and also consists of two vars. The second var suspected to be the CRC value of the compressed data. So we tried to calculate the CRC value of the compressed data, but we didn't get the expected value. So maybe this is not a CRC? We tried to locate the point where this value is accessed and discovered it compared to a variable calculated using an algorithm similar to a CRC calculations. So we searched on Google and we found out that this is actually a specific CRC algorithm that's called JAMCRC, which is calculated by one minus the CRC value. So we were, we were confident that we could modify the base VDM and fix the expected CRC value that appears in the headers. And by doing so, the update would be validated successfully, and we would be able to take down Defender. But the update was unsuccessful, even though we fixed the CRC of the compressed data. Likely, there are additional validation checks. Where do, where do these validation occurs, and what do they validate? So let's find them out. The modification was simple. We just open up the base file and try to modify the signatures. After the modification, we wrapped up the base file and tried to, update, to do an update attempt. But it turned out to be a quite more complicated than we thought. We completely ignored the delta file. And we assume that the error we got related to the relationship between the base file and the delta file. 
There are two pairs of VDMs. The first pair contains the antivirus definition of Defender. And the second pair contains the spyware definitions. Each of these pairs is identical in terms of the format of the signatures and the files. So all the findings and conclusion we will show now apply to each of these VDMs. Okay, as we mentioned earlier, we ignore the delta, but now it's time to focus on the purpose of the delta file. During an update, both the base and the delta files are involved. The merge takes the base file and the delta simply defines the changes to be made to this base file. The resulting output will represent the update version from the delta. This update process is referred to as incremental. To modify the base signatures, we need to supply a delta file that precisely, precisely patches the base with the intended, intended changes. But to do that, we need to understand the entire merge process internals and identify any other validation we encountered with. So now we will delve into the merge process. We, we've talked about the VDM file format, specifically the base file format, which contains threads and their signatures. Now let's look into the delta format and how it combines with the base file to create a new file with the new signatures. So we went back to the decompressed delta file and we figured out that the delta is a signature based file too. We saw that the delta always contains two signatures. The second signature is blob signature type and we ignore the blob rec info signature as we assume all the essential data contained in the blob signature. So right after the signature header, we have two number, which we were not sure about their purpose. So we will call them unknown for now. We will come back to them later on, so keep in mind. The rest of the data right after these numbers is actually the actions, which define the actions done by the merge algorithm. How do they define the actions? Now we will answer this question. We spotted the point where Defender parsed the actions. This block of code shows where actually the action parse start. By, read by reading a D word from the action stream and then check the MSB. We reverse all the merge process and figure out how the merge works. Let's delve into the internals. So we identified two action types, copy from delta and copy from base. Copy from delta used to copy size bytes from the delta into the merge. And copy from base used to copy size bytes from an offset within the base file into the merge file. So let's exactly see the format of each of these actions. To parse the action, we first need to read two bytes representing the action header. The first bit within the action header indicates the action type. Zero for copy from delta and one for copy from base section. The rest of the action header is dependent on the action type. So first, let's take a look on copy from delta action. So here we have an action example and the first thing to do is to read the first two bytes and check the MSB to identify which type of action is it? The MSB here is zero, means this action is copy from delta. Then it means that the next 15 bits represents the size variable, which tells us how many bytes to read. The size variables is set to one, so we need to, to read one byte right after the action header. So in this example, we will read 5C, and place it in, into the new merge file. Now that we understand how to parse copy from delta action, let's move on to copy from base action. 
So when we look at copy from base action, we can see that the MSB is on. But in this case, after reverse engineer of consume input compress function, we found out that in this case, the size variable calculated in the following way. Firstly, take the two bytes and turn off the MSB by end bitwise, bitwise with 7FFF. Then we add six, which resolves the size variable. We now know how many bytes to read, but the question is where we will read them from. So copy from base action type actually consists also the offset. The next D word right after the action header indicates the offset within the base file we should read the bytes from. So in this example, the size is equal to 8,005 bytes after the calculation we saw, and we should read them from the offset one of the base file and eventually place them into the merge file. So to summarize, the delta file contains compressed data, and by decompressing this data, we can extract the blob signature. The blob contains the action of the merge, and the actions tells how to build the new updated file depending on the current version of the base file. And all this occurs in memory. So following our knowledge, we developed a script that do the merge between the base file and the delta file. We run our code and got a merge stream that actually seems like base with signatures, but with some modifications. Here we can see a diff between base signature to a merge signatures. The bytes that marked in yellow are the modified bytes, and the size of the data got bigger. Probably the merge process added some new signatures. And here things are starting to reveal a clear image of what is happening. As we said before, we will talk about the anno numbers we mentioned before. We started to investigate the merge properties, like the size of the merge and the CRC of the data, and we looked up for correlation to the anno numbers. And a Eureka, we got it. The first number represents the size of the merge, and the second number is actually the CRC of the merge data. These two numbers are the expected values that defenders compares with. The numbers are actually one more layer of validations. So I want to recap all the three validations we discovered. The first validation simply checks if the zlib compressed data isn't changed. How does Defender check this? By comparing the expected CRC value within the zlib data header to the calculated CRC on the zlib compressed data. The next validation, validations are the ones we just mentioned. Merge size validation ensures the size of the merge, and merge CRC ensures the, validates the CRC of the data. These checks confirms the success of the merge algorithm. So we wondered if now we have all the knowledge we need in order to fake an update. We try to change the delta action in such a way that the merge will result with a difference. And it worked. We managed to update Defender with a fake unsigned database using unprivileged user. So let's see what we can do with this capability. We will explain three attack vectors. Okay, we have developed a fully automatic tool tool called WD Pretender, which stands for Windows Defender Pretender. This tool supports all the attack vectors are going, that we are going to present. We will share the GitHub link at the end of the presentation. So as we explained earlier, the signatures of Defender resulted from merging the delta and the base file. The database file of Defender are composed of threads. Each thread has its name, and we can infer from its name the purpose of the thread. Now, what will happen if we will try to 
delete all the threads that contain the keyword lasagna in their name. We will show how deletion of threads resulting with bypass and with successful execution of lasagna tool. So let's see. So now we check if we are unprivileged user, and we can see. So we are uh, we're running. Now we're trying to download lasagna tool, which is a malicious tool, and this defender immediately triggered and delete lasagna. And now we will run WD Pretender in order to delete all the threads that related to the lasagna tool. And all the threads deleted, and the tool will export a new video and files with the deleted lasagna tool threads. And we run an update attempt. And we can see that in a minute that the update successful. Now we will try to download again the, the lasagna tool. Bingo. So we actually, we actually managed to bypass Defender. So back to you, Tomer. Thank you, Omer. So ready for more demos? OK, let's continue. OK, so one of the signature types seemed very interesting. Microsoft named it friendly file. Signature with a hash algorithm like SHA-256, as you can see on the left. We wondered what do Microsoft means by friendly files. So by passing all the friendly file signatures from the video files, revealed a very long sorted list of hashes. The hash marked in green on the right belongs to the Oracle's virtual box runtime library. So we assume that this signature is probably an allow list implementation probably to reduce false positive caused, for example, by, by these Oracle executables and other files. So what will happen if we replace the hash value of Oracle file with the known Mimikets hash value without any modification? Will it be allowed to execute? Can we create a friendly Mimikets file? Let's see. OK, so we are trying to download it. And of course, Defender detected it as Mimikets, because it's the known Mimikets, right? Now we run our tool, and we replace the known I hash of Mimikets with some other friendly hash of the Oracle file. And we run the update. Look on the right. You will see that the update was successful. Now we'll show that at the logs, as well, it's successfully updated. And now we'll download it again from the same place. The known Mimikets, let's see if it's running. Yeah, it's running. But now, let's see if it's working. So let's try to extract all the user credentials. And it worked well with the default defender. Crazy, right? But, but this is not it. Our final demo is much more crazier. We, we are going to force Defender to delete all the PE files in the PC by modifying existing emotet signature to include the DOS mod stub string, which appears in all of the portable executable in the world from the 80s, right, as a new malicious signature. When Defender will find this string, this program cannot be run in DOS mode, do you familiar with it? Uh, in OS files, it will automatically delete all of them, causing permanent delay of service. Do you want to see it? OK, let's see it. OK, so we are running our tool. We generated an update file. We are copying it to the, to the VM machine. And we will run the update as an un, uh, unprivileged user. You can see that it only belongs to the user group. Let's run, let's run the update. Look on the left. We will see that the update was successful with unsigned files. Now we'll wait a few seconds. It's not edited. And we don't have sounds, but Defender just 
triggered on many of DLLs and sys files. And if I had sound, it would like got crazy here because there's a party of Mimikatz files and uh, emotet files and all of the drivers are like emotet malwares uh, and we'll run a scan, a custom scan only on the driver folders under system32 and it will take like a few seconds, let's wait for it uh, to finish and defenders going crazy, you need to restart the computer, you need to do something, I cannot do anything, you know, and let's see what happened. Uh, it will you have a very long list of all the files in the machine detected as emotet malware. And when we'll try to restart and the attacker will do it, uh, believe me, the operating system will not reboot anymore. And this computer is completely dead. Uh, so believe me, I won't, I, I tried a lot of times, but I will save time. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, so this demo was recorded on an older version of Defender. And the newest version at the time of the recording, it was 3.8.1, uh, implements few additional checks. For example, uh, we had to remove all the signature type trusted publisher uh, to make Defender delete benign drivers and OS executable. So there are other defenses, but they are bypassable as well. Uh, let's speak a little bit about future work. Uh, we found out that the signature database file also include 30,000 Lua scripts. And Microsoft used a, modify, a modified Lua adder for them. But we were able to overcome this modification and de to decompile all of them and extract the source code of all the 30,000 Lua scripts. Let's see an example. For example, Lua rule to detect suspicious file masquerading as legit Windows file. The rules is very basic. It simply checks if a file has the same name of an OS executable file, but not in the OS legit path. So what will happen if we will change this rule code to run our own code? We tried to use Lua libraries, but failed, since Microsoft probably limit the usage of these Lua libraries. But we still think it might be possible to achieve LPE, local privilege escalation, using Microsoft Redemiation Library that we saw used in some other of their Lua scripts, but we had not enough time to do it, uh, so we leave it to you, and maybe we'll do it. Uh, so please update us if you were able to do that. And let's think about the, the takeaways. First one, trust no one. We are at Blackhead, right? Uh, so even the most reliable security controls might be used as the loophole by the adversaries and their architecture and work processes should be checked and verified in continuous security validation process. The second one is using digitally signed files does not always necessarily mean totally secure. Security vendors should always verify in any step of the process that the trust was not broken. And finally, signature update process of security control is probably a new possible attack vector, and we believe that further research is very important in this field. We reported to Microsoft, which released a patch and assigned this CVE ID. Please make sure that you are using this version of the malware protection platform or above. If not, you are vulnerable. This is the Windows Pretender GitHub QR code. You can take a photo and link. I will wait a few seconds. If somebody want to take a picture. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. So, these past researchers help us a lot, and we built our research based on their initial findings. Thank you very much.